What's up y'all, this is Jesse Warden. Tonight I'm gonna to show you global exception handling or global error handling in Corona SDK. It's in uh, one of the daily builds, so I don't know if you have it yet, but I wanted to show you it because I think it's pretty dope. Dope. That's awesome. So there's a caveat with it. I also wanted to show you, and that is when you run it in the current stack, it doesn't suppress the errors. <laughs> so it can be a little annoying at first if you don't know why it's happening, but it's actually a good feature and I'll show you why. So what we're concerned about is when you have errors at runtime, it'll display um, some kind of error pop-up on Android devices. I forget what it does on iOS. I think it's the alert as well. And what you're trying to do is prevent those from being shown to a user, also known as a release build, right? If you're a developer, you wanna see those, you wanna go on a device and see those runtime errors, some of those errors could be asserts or errors that actually have custom messages that you've given to yourself to say, oh, okay, this value is null, or I can't find this thing, or whatever else, right? But you don't want users generally to see that. And additionally, Lua, it's just like any other language, if it has an error, sometimes it can't recover from the stack, so a lot of other code will break because of that one small error, right? So if you have good error handling, sometimes you can fix it, sometimes you can hack around it, sometimes you can at least prevent the user from seeing that, which is a good user experience. For the most part, you don't want users to ever really ever see those kind of things. Um, the only time they're good is if they're custom and you know they're custom and they can report that error message. But again, having users to report errors and things like that isn't you know, really that good of experience on a mobile device. On desktop and some iPad events, it's getting a little better. User testing showing that they will submit errors, bugs, uh, reports, you know, airports are useful. But for a lot of the, the smaller phone games or whatever else, users aren't gonna do it. So it's better if you report it to yourself, right? Just don't dosh yourself. So how does that work? What does that mean? Well, it means any error, no pointer, whatever, will get dispatched. So for example, let's create a global on error handler. On error. Etter, etter, on error. I'm Scottish. On error event will return false, which is the default behavior, right? If you do nothing, this is what happens. Now, for some of you who say, well, Jesse, I don't have the daily build yet. I'm an indie. I've got two cents to my name when I walk into McDonald's and they ask, can I help you? I say, no, I'm just looking. You know, I get it, right? But when you get the money or you win a contest and you get a Corona SDK license, which is really reasonable, the daily build that you, you, you eventually get will work. So you can write this code today and it'll be forward compatible. Cool. So we're going to do, uh, what was the code? <laughs> I can't remember. So what we're going to do is do an unhandled error on error. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Let's do a function called test and we'll say look cow is not a table. Uh -huh. We'll go cow.name equals cheese. And we'll run, now notice that we're not getting errors, okay? As soon as we get uh, we call the function, we're gonna get a null pointer because cow is not actually initialized as a table. So when we try to access a dot property of null, it's gonna go explosions, right? So let's check it out, okay? Now in the new build, you'll see this thing. It's a little pop-up and it sometimes goes behind your code editor, which is annoying, but whatever. So you have three options, two of which do the same thing. So you can either relaunch it if you've been coding while you're waiting or you can continue to let the code ex continue to execute. Sometimes it'll recover, sometimes not. Other times it'll actually give you this, the normal pop-up, right? And this one is um, what would normally be shown both on a device, right? iOS or Android as a, you know an alert pop-up. And on the desktop, this is normally what you would see in the simulator. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go return true, okay? Now you'll notice nothing changes. Jesse, why is that? Just kidding, something does change. You'll notice now we get one pop-up, right? Now this is the normal runtime error pop-up. The other one will not show to a user because we return true. It's very similar to returning true from a click handler or I'm sorry, a touch handler. It just means that I've got it handled, bro. Like I got this like twice on Sundays, right? That's what it means. So you can write this, default it to true, right? These two lines of code, three lines, four, whatever, and know that none of those error pop-ups will be shown to a user, but you can see them during development, right? Now you shouldn't do this unless you're ready to do a release, but it's very useful to see these errors actually on a device can pop up and everything else. But this is just one way that you can guarantee that's not shown. Now you'll have problems where sometimes uh, these functions will be running and you won't, you won't actually see this happen. So this runtime error handler will register 
but you'll still get the pop-up and you'll be a little confused. It's probably because of two reasons. A, the code that is causing the error occurred before the actual runtime event listener that I've highlighted here has actually been registered. The other time is that sometimes in the stack, it'll throw an error that causes problems to the actual listener, abandons the entire stack, and the error, error handler just doesn't catch it because it's not soon enough, right, for the stack to actually return. Sounds strange, but I'll show you an example. My error, okay, and we'll make another function called my error, which goes error, this is, oh my god, right? And we run that, and we're gonna call it before we actually add the event listener, right? You can even call it after we defined it, but before we've actually added it. Huh? Huh? Tricky. Oh, notice you still get the pop up, right? So your users are going to see it. So you have to make sure you don't run any code. There's a couple ways to handle that. Just make sure that you add this first, <laughs> right? Duh. Thanks, Jesse. Wow, that was a great YouTube video. Or B, you can uh, actually delay. It's, it's the same tactic used in underscore. So underscore in JavaScript has uh, a variety of issues when you try to do the same thing in the stack. JavaScript is somewhat tied to the DOM and, and rendering as well. And there's also certain other things that your code can't do too much per you know stack or too much per whatever they're running, that iteration they've given you, that time slice to actually run your JavaScript. So what they'll do is they'll actually wait uh, 100 milliseconds to run a function. And that guarantees that by that time it's run, this, the call stack has actually been undone and it goes to the next time slice. So you get a brand new stack, right? So that kind of guarantees that you don't have to worry about your errors occurring before that. So what do I mean by time? Well, we can do something like this. We can say delay. Now you can also use the underscore library to do this, but I'm just gonna do it this way just to show you how it works, okay? You just make a temporary timer, perform with delay, right? And you say 100 milliseconds, right? And your listener is the funk that you passed in. I don't care about iterations for now. The funk. And we'll say delay calling test. Now you don't see it at all. Pretty cool, huh? Now if we were to go back to the regular test, you'll notice you'll still see the cop the pop up, right? So again, let's recap. If we take out this guy, you're gonna see the developer pop up, okay? If you actually return true from it, you're gonna get the normal developer pop up, you know, in the simulator that you wanna see for errors, and you don't actually have to have your actual terminal running to see the errors. You can actually run Corona, the app for change, instead of actually running the terminal, so it can actually STD out, STD, that's fine, S out, standard out for the, um, text or you can wait a couple frames and guarantee that it never ever prints out and then you can just simply never see it and it'll always be here right? it's up to you if you want you can even create your own debug window and say print out the event dot error message um, it'll actually print that out like in the console so you can even custom format some of the errors right if you want to display something to the user you knew it was actually a valid error so you see it says error down here. You can do that as well. But I think from a, a testing perspective, usually it's good to have your main main function, right? Whatever that is. You delay about 100 milliseconds. All your globals are set up. You're good to go. The timer only ones, runs one time. Generally, you'd be good to go, right? So again, you still want to return false, right? If you want to see that this, this main pop-up for users... Uh, on, a, on a build, aka the user being you. you. I'm testing on my device, I need to see if something's acting differently on the Android and it's acting on iOS, whatever that is, right? But you're still gonna see that other one, unless you turn true, and it's not delayed, okay? So that 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 delay thing really threw me for a loop, because everything online said, well, there shouldn't be two dialogues, there should be one, but even so, you shouldn't see it. And I'm like, I'm still seeing it. Well, it turns out it's still in that particular stack. Now, if you're wondering what's a stack, just to give you a clue, um, we'll comment this out. I've already made a project. I'm going to show you again. We'll open uh, Lua Glider. Not Caderos. Lua Glider. So Lua Glider is kind of an IDE that's based on NetBeans. It's like a Java thing. And what it does is it allows you to see the stack and debug code. It's amazing. 
The challenge that I have with it is it's just not as fast as Sublime. Sublime is lightning speed, but if you're debugging some really complicated code, it's it's just off the chain how cool it is, okay? So what we're gonna do is, let's see if I can get the original error handling here. I think if I set a breakpoint, it's gonna add an import to the top, but let's add it right here, okay? Just so you can see, you have to debug to actually see your stack, okay? Now you'll notice that it's frozen right here on the breakpoint, okay? And you can see the stack is right here. That C code, that's really smart, low level, like numbers, zeros and ones that smart people, right? You don't have to worry about that. But it calls us, which is test. And main chunk, it doesn't, it's not main chunk, it has a name, it's called test, but whatever. So test function, the main chunk of test that is actually running is some chunk of code that's actually executing. This is the stack. It's C, which then calls test, which then runs a main chunk, right? Now it could run another function, it would put that on the stack. We can do that. But anyway, the point I want to show you is if we step, okay, and see the stack, we step in the code and see what happens next, it'll immediately catch it and on air, right? Which then adds it to the stack, okay, right up here. Uh, the question mark means anonymous. Usually some anonymous function or anonymous user data C thing that we don't know about forwarded it. It's, it's, it's basically magic, right? It's what JavaScript developers do all the time. So you go there, and it's on error. You notice it's catching it, okay? So we can step through that and say, all right, hand, print it out to the console and then return true. And then it'll suppress the error dialog if it's not in the same stack. Notice we're in the same stack, okay? Now watch this. We take delay, common out test. Now watch this. I'm gonna debug. It's gonna go to cow name just like it did last time. We're gonna step. And again, you see the same call stack. We're in the error. Now watch what happens. As soon as error is done, it's gonna get off the stack. It's called popping and pushing off the stack. But anyway, we're gonna step, return true, and done. Right? Finish debugging session. No error. So I'll show you it again in regular mode, okay? No error. Show it in debug mode. It actually hits the error function, returns true. And we're done. You can actually continue continue running. So that's that's the interesting thing that caught me a lot for delay tests. You just delay your first function, you're gonna go. Again, it doesn't matter where your code is. To give an example, let's go back to Sublime. And I'll make Uno sub G. Uno calls dose. Say function dose. And he prints. Just kidding. Just kidding. He does an error of. Uh oh. Right? Now, again, you don't have to print it. It's already going to print it if you already have the terminal. But if you're building your own debugger, or you're running with the release mode instead of the actual Corona terminal, you know, print the error out. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have to see it, right? This is kind of the default behavior from past versions of Corona. So if you want to see again how deep the stack goes, how deep does the rabbit hole go, Alice? You might want to ask her when she's, uh, you know, 50 feet tall. You have to be really old to get that joke. I'm not that old, but I'm making fun of old people. All right, so let's paste that in there, and I'll show you what happens when we call dose here. Okay. We'll debug. Right, it goes down there. Let's uh, let's actually get um local test to call Uno first. Okay. Let's re-debug. Look at that call stack. Anonymous, anonymous test, Uno dose, right? So deep, so big, but not an error dialogue anywhere. Right? So this is the greatness of uh, Corona SDK global error handling. Love it. Love it. It's the most wonderful addition. I love what uh, it took me five years, six years, seven, seven years to really understand error handling. Like we in ActionTrip didn't really have it. And JavaScript had it, but it was kind of not really implemented the same across browsers. And so in ActionScript, we got it a lot like the Java guys got it, but you couldn't really, you know, bubble up errors like they didn't act like events, you know, go up to the display list. 
they didn't go up to function call stacks the right way. Sometimes the entire stack would be abandoned. And then when we, we had, um, I remember seeing it in Director back in 2000, I'm like, this is interesting. But by then, Director was mature, right? Flash didn't really get it until, I think it was 10.1. Corona now has it in like, uh, just a random daily build. Like, this is wonderful. Like, how can you not be insanely happy to suppress errors, know when they occur, catch it, never worrying about, you know, dialogues popping up and having the option to do so. It's great. So, as you can see, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I've been I've been playing with this uh, functionality for a few days. So, but anyway, this delay thing was really what I want to show you. That got me about it. So, again, my name is Jesse Warden. That is Corona Global Air Handling, and uh, you should definitely check out Lua Glider if you haven't. It's fun for debugging, but I'm gonna stick to Sublime. So, I hope that was helpful. Again, my name is Jesse Warden. You can contact me on Twitter, Jester Excel, email, and uh, you can subscribe right there, somewhere there. Peace out.